Whether you are starting out, deep into your retirement, or somewhere in between, The Money Answer Show has the know-how to help you. Now here's your host, Jordan Goodman. Welcome to The Money Answer Show. This is Jordan Goodman, your host. My guest this hour is Oleg Edelman. He is the Senior Life Settlement Analyst at Life Insurance Settlements, Inc. Welcome to the show, Oleg. Thanks for having me, Jordan. appreciate being here. Let's get to a little bit of background about you and uh, your history and how you got to, to be uh, the life settlement uh, expert you are. Uh, well, well, I've been doing this since 2002, um, it's where what we do is on behalf of people that have life insurance, usually seniors or people that are dealing with serious health issues, if they have life insurance that they deem are no longer needed, no longer wanted, maybe they can't afford anymore, we help them sell that policy or at least get a fair valuation in the secondary market uh, to see what their other uh, options might be beyond just having to uh, keep that policy going or, uh, you know, it's an alternative to them lapsing or surrendering this uh, policy. So I've, I've been doing this uh, for now 16 years where what we do is uh, get all the necessary information and go out to licensed providers in the marketplace uh, to get a fair evaluation of that policy. Very good. So this is something a lot of people probably have not heard uh, even is an option. Say you have a life insurance policy um, and it, it becomes the premiums have gone up and so it doesn't seem affordable anymore or you don't really need it anymore. Is this something that your life insurance company or your life insurance agent is probably going to tell you is an option instead of letting the policy lapse? Unfortunately, you rarely do hear that from the insurance company or their agents. The insurance companies would rather have that policy lapse or surrender because at that point they'll be off the hook and they'll no longer be um, have to pay out that death benefit um, down the road, uh, and, and that's what they prefer. But it, it's something that it's it's legal, it's it's regulated in in over 40, uh, 43 states, I believe, around the country, and it's highly regulated by the Department of Insurance in each and every state, and it's something that. A lot of agents aren't even aware of this option or are usually misinformed about this option, but there are agents that are helping their clients out as well, but you don't really see much of that. Are there some states where the policyholder must be told this is an option before they lapse their policy? Uh, there, there, have been, um, there has been some legislation passed in about a handful of states, and that's probably going to lead to more. But many times, uh, I guess w w when they're getting that warning, I don't know if the, you know, uh, the people are, are really aware. Sometimes it's a little too late. But there has been some movement towards that by states uh, to try to help uh, advise uh, people that they do have an option, a perfectly legal, regulated option uh, about uh, alternatives to their life insurance policy. Because many people do lapse or surrender their policies. Over 80 percent. Um, people uh, don't cash out their policy, uh, they just uh, wind up dropping it eventually. And actually, on a term policy, that's probably over 90 to 95 percent that, that drop their policy. So that's a, a very high number uh, of policies that are just going in the garbage. And a lot of those can be sold uh, for you know, tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars. So give us a sense of the size of the situation here. Roughly, what is the dollar amount of death benefit lapses that happen to senior 65? Just roughly to give us a sense of the size of the situation here. Um, that's billions upon billions. Um, I, it, it's, like I said, over 80% of policies. And that's, that's uh, you know, on an annual basis, uh, you, you know, probably – hundreds of, of billions of dollars uh, on an annual basis. So uh, for now, separate from life insurance agents, are other financial professionals, financial planners, CPAs, typically aware of this option and tell people about it? There are. It's just, you know, just like the insurance agents, there are, you know, a lot of them just aren't aware of it or, or the ones that are are usually – little bit misinformed about it. It's, it's a niche product, so it's not something that they hear about all the time. Uh, but it is something that CPAs, attorneys, planners, advisors, um, uh, uh, they're actively uh, pursuing this for their clients, but the numbers are still uh, very, very small compared to the ones that, 
that aren't talking about this and, and aren't uh, educated enough. And a lot of that has been because of, I, I'm assuming uh, there's been a lot of misinformation, and I think a lot of that's been pushed out by the insurance uh, companies because they, they would much. It's, their business model is to have people buy insurance policies that are very inexpensive and, and that serve a purpose for the purpose. You know, for people in their 30s and their 40s and their 50s and their 60s, but once people started hitting their 60s, 70s, 80s, those policies become extremely expensive. And in term policies, you know, when the conversion option runs out, policies are skyrocketing. So it's they're sort of designed that when their people are in their later years, those policies become more expensive and oftentimes unaffordable for a lot of their you know, the people that own the policies. Okay, we're going to go to another break. This is Jordan Goodman of The Money Answer Show. My guest this hour is Oleg Edelman. He is the Senior Life Settlement Analyst at Life Insurance Settlements, Inc. You can find out more about this as far as selling your policy at fundinglife.com or their phone number 877-485-6681. We'll be back after this. We're always talking business. Talk to an expert. Call now, toll free, 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Voice America Business Network. We've all been there. Struggling to keep up with credit card payments? Searching for a simpler, safer way out of debt? Well, here it is. Cambridge Credit Counseling is a nonprofit service that has been helping people reduce or eliminate their credit card debt for over 20 years. Most of us have made late payments and even gone over our credit limits. Before we know it, our balances are out of control and we can barely afford to make the minimum payments. If this sounds familiar and you're ready to take control of your debts, call Cambridge right away at 1 800 897 2200 for a debt free analysis. Cambridge will work with your creditors and may be able to reduce your interest rates and get you out of debt fast. In fact, Cambridge's typical debt management clients save almost $150 every month on their credit card payments, and they're debt-free in just 50 months. So there is a simpler, safer way out of debt, and it all starts with Cambridge Credit Counseling. Call 1-800-897-2200 for your free debt analysis. Cambridge Credit Counseling is a Massachusetts-based nonprofit agency providing services nationwide. For complete licensing information, Visit them online at cambridge-credit.org. Jordan Goodman is an affiliate. He recognizes quality solutions, forming relationships to help improve the lives of his listeners. Many industries have been revolutionized by technology in the last decade. Books, music, TV, communications, and now it's happening to our money and the way we pay. Tune into Breaking Banks with Brett King for a look at how technology and customer behavior will bring about more changes in banking in the next 10 years than in the last 200 years. Listen every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, noon Pacific on Voice America Business Channel or on AM 1160 The Voice. You'll never look at your bank account the same again. We're always talking business. Talk to an expert. Call now. Toll free. 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Voice America Business Network. You've been listening to The Money Answer Show with Jordan Goodman. If you have a question for Jordan or his guest, please call us now at 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Now back to Jordan. Welcome back to the Money Answer Show. This is Jordan Goodman, your host. My guest this hour is Oleg Edelman. He is the Senior Life Settlement Analyst at Life Insurance Settlements, Inc., which is a company that helps people sell their life insurance policies. Welcome back to the show, Oleg. Hey, thank you. Um, So we were going into the different reasons why one would want to sell your life insurance policy, the first one being a sale of a business or other liquid asset. Uh, Then the next one is a business owner may be retiring or exiting from the business. Why would it make sense to sell a policy in that circumstance? Correct. Sometimes the, the business has a policy. On, the owner would have it on himself or on a key employee, and oftentimes when they retire, those are no longer necessary, and you know they want to take the premiums off the books of the business, and those are often dropped. So those are excellent policies to have evaluated, correct? 
And the next one is a decline in the estate value or a decrease in estate tax liability. Now, the estate taxes have changed lately, raising the exemption amount. How would that affect the need to have a life insurance policy? Well, correct, yes, because because people have, uh, uh, the laws have changed, and it's a lot of the policies that were once designed to handle their estate tax uh, at, at their person's passing is no longer needed, so those are policies that, a lot of people are choosing to have evaluated and, and to sell if, if there's no other use for them. That's, that's been happening more and more. But sometimes people, as they get older, their, their estate size is dwindled or, or they've out reallocated it. So that's another reason why that policy may no longer be needed. Those are often very, very large policies, and, and those premiums are uh, quite expensive. So, you know, they're happy to get those, uh, you know, spend that money elsewhere. What did happen to the estate tax exemption? Where did it go from and where did it go to with the new tax law? I, I believe it went from, from $5 million to, to $10 million per household so that a lot of people that, that were once uh, eligible, that, that were going to be forced uh, to, to have estate tax protection uh, are no longer, that's gone away. Yeah, very good. Another reason is that term policies are about to expire or lose their conversion privilege um, or come to the end of the current premium guarantee. So explain how that would work and why would that be a reason to sell your life insurance policy? Well, well term policies are, are great for our market and we're seeing a ton of them because like I mentioned before, over 90% of those policies wind up uh, being dropped because they're set up to, for people that buy them for five or 10 or 20 years to be super inexpensive and, and to cover the younger, healthier years of, of a person. But what happens at the end of, you know, the five or 10 or however many years that term con uh, conversion option is there, uh, you pay a, a very small rate. But when that option expires, the premiums skyrocket. You have actually a couple of choices at that point. Uh, most people aren't even aware of the other ones. So when they see that huge premium increase, they wind up dropping it immediately. But if you, you're aware of your conversion option, you can kind of get ahead of it because that conversion option, by utilizing it, you can convert it to a permanent universal life policy. And the premiums would still go up quite a bit, but still that would be an attractive policy for our market and can still be sold, uh, where a lot of people aren't even aware that they have that option. Uh, so it's something that if, if, if you look through the policy, so if you bought a 20-year term policy, the first 20 years would be super inexpensive. And after the 20th year, the premiums would probably go up five to tenfold and continue to drastically uh, and aggressively increase each and every year after. If you are able to convert it, or at least in our market, what we would do is get a conversion projection. So they wouldn't even have to convert it to have it evaluated we could get a projection to show if it was converted, what it would look like. And we have a lot of success selling those policies. And, and for term policies, people could be even in their mid-60s and healthy and get something where, like I mentioned, so many of them get zero and uh, unfortunately wind up throwing it in the garbage. So you can sell the policy before it's converted or do you actually have to convert it before you sell the policy? Well, what we would do in our evaluation is to get that projection to, sh to see before you do anything to see what the, proje uh, what the cost would look like if it was converted. And that's how we would put it out to the market. If we got an offer from one of the buyers, usually the buyers would want to have it converted right before or right after the sale. But that's already at the point where the seller would be fully aware of their, of their, all their options uh, on our side. So, we wouldn't want somebody to convert the policy first, assuming they could sell it, because if we couldn't sell it or if they converted it to the wrong policy, that might hurt them. And especially if they had a few more years left on that conversion option, so they might have decided to keep it a little bit longer. But if they were trying to sell it and they converted it first, they couldn't you know, bring it back to a term and pay the less expensive rates if they still had a little bit more time doing that. But with our evaluation, all we're doing is getting the projection so if the person, if we tell them, okay, we have an offer for you of $100,000 for your, 
you know, $500,000 policy, if at that point they decide, okay, that's a great offer, let's go forward, at that point we would find out, depending on the buyer, if we were going to convert it right before or right after the sale. And if it was right before, it would be something where we would help them convert the policy. And uh, if it was right after, then we would just sell it as is, then the buyer would convert it themselves. So the insurance company so cannot object. The insurance company cannot say, you can't convert it because you're about to sell the policy. If It's in the contract, and they have to be able to convert it. Is that right? Correct, correct. It's, 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 a policy is, is like a, any type of a legal agreement. So whatever options are in that legal agreement or your insurance policy today, the insurance company can't all of a sudden switch, you know, switch anything and, and, and stop the, the seller's ability to convert that policy. They, they paid for that policy over all those years to have that option in place if and when they wanted to convert it or somebody else that owned the policy wanted to convert it. Yeah. Another reason is retirement. When somebody's about to retire, why would they want to sell their life uh, insurance policy? Well, like I said, a lot of times people buy these policies in their 30s and their 40s and their 50s for various reasons. And oftentimes these policies are very inexpensive. When people get into their retirement years, often those reasons that they initially bought the policy have gone away. Also, they're you know, the last thing they want to do is have an extra expense of something that's probably a lot less necessary. So it, it's something that often seniors, when they're retiring, wind up dropping their policies because, uh, you know, a lot of people buy these policies for their young family. And by the time that people are in retirement age, those young kids already are, you know, much older kids with their own family, with their own jobs, with their own money. And, and that the, the protection is no longer needed. So the kids are self-supporting at that point. So you're saying it's not worth paying the premiums because the kids don't, in effect, need it that much. Well, a lot of people, it's it's you know, it's 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 a case by case situation, and just like any time, you know, it. I, I always use the analogy of these policies are kind of like houses. You know, you bought your your five bedroom house or your four bed. You know, whatever you bought at a certain age, as you get older, those those situations change and people when they get older you know might want to downsize they might want to spend less money they don't need all the protection or all the rooms in their house so it's something that over the years needs change and with the policy a lot of people wind up dropping their policy and getting a new policy where they should always investigate you know if the old policy might still be sellable uh, that's sometimes a possibility and they might still qualify for new coverage but why drop the you know, what they've outgrown or what they no longer need as before getting an evaluation to make sure that they're not throwing something very valuable in the garbage. Now, recently we've had low interest rates, and that has meant in many cases that premiums have gone up more than they would have been in the past when interest rates are higher because the insurance companies are not earning what they used to in their portfolio. Is that another reason why people should sell their life insurance policy? Correct, correct. Uh, uh, some of these... Uh, universal life policies, they're underperforming. Uh, when people bought these policies, they were expecting a certain rate of, of cost associated with that policy. But those are locked in to a certain degree, and because of the interest rates, because of the uh, market, because of a lot of various factors, uh, those numbers are now sometimes a little bit or a lot more expensive than they ever expected. So it's something that that might uh, push that policy for being affordable to no longer affordable uh, for that person. Yeah. And then another reason is chronic illness. If somebody has an illness that's going to last a long time, why would they want to sell their policy? Well, it, it's, you know, just, just like uh, with the other situations, their situation has drastically changed more so than others. And now they might need more money than they've ever needed before for, for, for medical bills, for expenses, for, for pharmaceuticals, for, for et cetera. So it's something that they might now be able to look at that policy as, as a way to, to uh, you know, pay some of those bills by selling that valuable asset um, as opposed to holding on to it. So there are no restrictions when you receive the payment for the policy as to how you can, you don't have to use it only for medical expenses. You can use it for whatever you want. Is that right? 
Correct, correct. There's actually a legislation uh, in, in Washington right now that, that's trying to push forward that it, it might uh, allow people at a tax-free situation to, once they get their proceeds, if they spend it towards health care, towards, uh, towards uh, medical expenses, things like that, that it would be uh, used in a, in a tax-free situation where some of these, you know, most of these aren't taxed anyway, but sometimes, you know, there's a little bit of taxes being paid. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about Life Insurance Settlements, Inc., and if people had a policy they want to at least appraise and see what the value of it was, what website or phone number should they call to find out more about what you might be able to help them with? Uh, our our toll-free number is 877-485-6681. Once again, that's 877-485-6681. And the website is fundinglife.com. Once again, it's fundinglife.com. What we do, we're, we're by far the largest brokerage firm in the country. So we don't represent any of these buyers. We, we represent the seller, the person that no longer wants or needs their policy. What we do is we're a full-service firm where we would go out and, and help them, uh, kind of like you know, going back to the housing analogy, like a real estate agent. We go out there and get all your medical records for the past five years. We get these insurance projections from the insurance company to forecast how the cost of that policy is going to continue going forward. And then um, we provide these to legitimate licensed buyers in our market that bring value to the table. And we let them all compete for that policy. They bid and counterbid against each other, and we come back with the highest possible offer. And if at that point the person, the seller, has changed their mind, or if they don't like the offer, or if there is no offer, they pay nothing. There's nothing that the, they're not obligating themselves in any way. So it's essentially a free appraisal of their insurance policy. And if they like the offers that they're getting, then they could go forward and, uh, and sell that policy. So the if they do offer. go ahead, if they do go ahead and sell their policy, what kind of fees or commissions or something do, does the seller pay uh, to cover the, your services? Well, the offers that, that we receive, that we pass along, are, are fully for, for the seller. Usually there's a, a, a fee above and beyond that the, that the buyer would be paying us. But if, if we offer the person 100000 or 200000 whatever their offer is, that would, be, uh, that would be theirs entirely. So it's not like we're giving them an offer of 100000 then they only get a check for 90000 or something like that. And, and we get paid and... Uh, from the buyer, which would be a little above and beyond uh, what the proceeds from, from the client gets. So the number you're giving them is a net number, net of any fees, correct? Correct, correct. And at the end, you know, our, our market is fully transparent, so they would see our, you know, the fees that we're getting from the buyer in their contract as well. Who are the buyers? What, what kind of companies want to buy life insurance policies? Uh, they're usually more so on the large institutional side. They're buying hundreds, if not thousands, of these a year. They're just using these policies for investment purposes. They're diversifying their investment portfolio. And this is just one of the many uh, uh, ways that they're doing it. This, this has been becoming a more and more attractive uh, investment asset. And they're doing it kind of like the insurance company is on the other side because they're doing it with the law of large numbers. So they figure if they're buying it correctly, they're probably getting close to you know, their desired uh, return. And it's something that this this market, this uh, investment pool, it's 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 a good diversification. Just because if the economy blows up tomorrow, it does, or or if we go to war or something like that, and the, and the market just drops, that policy isn't really affected that much. It might be slightly because of what we were talking about before, but it, it's something that it's uh, it's it's kind of a different asset class where it's, if they bought it correctly and they figure the person's going to you know, pass away in 15 years, uh, that's, that's when they re, you know, get their return 15 years down them. the road, and it's something yeah. on a long-term basis as well for them. Way for them to diversify. Very good. Okay, we're going to go to another break. This is Jordan Goodman of The Money Answer Show. My guest this hour is Oleg Edelman. He is the Senior Life Settlement Analyst at Life Insurance Settlements, Inc., you can find out more about this as far as selling your policy at FundingLife.com or their phone number 877-485-6681. We'll be back after this.
stocks, bonds, investment opportunities, financial news, and talk. We can help. Call us now toll free, 866-472-5790, 866-472-5790, Voice America Business Network. Do you or someone you love have a life insurance policy that's no longer needed or not affordable? Did you know that you can sell your policy for cash? Your reason for buying life insurance has probably changed. Thousands of Americans turn to life insurance settlements to help sell their policies. They act as your representative, getting the highest market offer for you. You've got nothing to lose by simply inquiring. If you're over 64 with $100,000 or more of life insurance, you may already qualify. Call 877-485-6681 to get your free non-binding appraisal or visit FundingLife.com. Life Insurance Settlements. Discover the true value of your life insurance. 877-485-6681. Jordan Goodman is an affiliate. He recognizes quality solutions, forming relationships to help improve the lives of his listeners. Looking for an investment option? Consider Secured Real Estate Income Strategies. Secured Real Estate Income Strategies is a real estate-backed option offering investments with a monthly income objective. The goal of the strategy is to lend money to real estate developers. SREIS offers an 8% preferred return per annum, plus a share in any profits. While there is risk, including loss of capital, and you should carefully read the offering circular for full details, Secured Real Estate Income Strategy screens each real estate loan carefully. Call 888-444-2102 or visit securedrealestatefunds.com to learn more. 888-444-2102. Jordan Goodman is an advisor to and part owner in Secured Real Estate Income Strategies. This does not constitute an offer to sell or a solicitation of an offer to buy any securities. Securities offered through North Capital Private Securities, member FINRA, SIPC. You've been listening to The Money Answer Show with Jordan Goodman. If you have a question for Jordan or his guest, please call us now at 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Now back to Jordan. Welcome back to The Money Answer Show. This is Jordan Goodman, your host. My guest this hour is Oleg Edelman. He is the Senior Life Settlement Analyst at Life Insurance Settlements, Inc., which is a company that puts buyers and sellers of life insurance policies together. Welcome back to the show, Oleg. Thank you, Jordan. So let's talk about the criteria that um, w- would be appropriate for uh, selling a life insurance policy, what the size, the age, the health condition, that kind of thing. Okay, well, um, th- there's quite a bit of a range. Um, if somebody's healthy, they could even start talking about it in their mid-60s. It might be a, a borderline situation at that point, but somebody even in their mid-60s could potentially qualify. Um, obviously, the older uh, somebody gets or, or the more health issues they might uh, have, there might, there's usually a better opportunity to sell that policy. Also, we can work with younger people if they're dealing with very serious uh, health issues. So even if they're in their 30s or 40s and so forth, they could potentially qualify depending on their health. Uh, but they would have to be dealing with some pretty serious health issues if they were that young. As far as policy size, uh, we can look at almost uh, anything as low as a hundred thousand, and and up to you know five, ten, twenty plus million. Really, there, there's nothing that's too big. If it's close to a hundred thousand or a little bit lower, sometimes an exception can be made. But generally, that's the cutoff. Um, any type of policy, uh, uh, we, we can look at uh, universal life, whole life, uh, term policies, second it dies. A lot of people don't think that uh, we can work with term policies, but those are, are usually the easiest ones for us uh, to work with. An important thing to remember, like uh, on the term policies that I was describing before, people have a conversion uh, deadline on those policies. So if we catch that policy before the conversion deadline, it's much easier to sell in our market, and the value is significantly higher if we're able to get there before that conversion deadline. And oftentimes, that, well, every time, that conversion deadline is in, in the policy. So a lot of people aren't aware of, of that date. And it's usually, if you buy a 5 or 10 or 20-year, 30-year term policy, it's usually that full 5, 10, you know, and so forth. But some of these policies have gotten trickier. And sometimes they'll tell you it's 20 years or age 65, whichever sooner. 
So it's important to really find out the exact date and be ahead of it. And if you are considering dropping your policy, try to contact us maybe, you know, six months before that conversion deadline so we have plenty of time to do the evaluation on that policy before that conversion option goes away. That's a very hard deadline for us. And once that goes away, you know, usually the opportunity is lost. So that's a very important uh Tell, 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 us, tell us about the policies. Tell us all like, about the medical evaluation that you go through, and how does a person's health affect the kind of price they'd be able to get for their policy? That's a great, great question. It, it's you know the there is no exam, so this is a really hands-off review as far as uh, the the individual, the insured um, work. All we're going to do is uh, part of the application is the, the person, uh, the insured, will provide us a signed HIPAA form and, and the list of their doctors that they've been to for the last five years that are important, uh, primary physician, cardiologist, things of that sense. Um, and, and all we'll do is get those medical records. So uh, we're not going to take anybody's uh, exam. We're not going to, uh, the insured will never speak to anybody or uh, be examined or, or anything like that. It, it, it's a very hands-off review. And based upon those, the evaluation of those records in our market is how the buyers are going to decide how much they want to buy that policy for. Now, as I mentioned before as well, this is an investment for, 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 this, uh, for these companies, these buyers. So if they think the person's going to live 15 or 20 years, they could forecast those premiums over that length of time to determine where they feel that you know, they could adequately uh, offer to get their return. And obviously, if, if, if they feel like the person has more health issues or might pass earlier, maybe in five or 10 years, the, that's the number of years that years earlier that the buyer can forecast that they're going to get their, their, their uh, investment paid off and, and how much less they're going to have to pay into those. You know, if they only pay for five years of premiums instead of 15 or 20, they can afford to give much higher offers out to the client. And, and that's how these offers are, are determined. Uh, the combination of the person's age and their health in combination with the cost of that policy. Some policies are, are very, very expensive and, and, even if somebody has a shortened life expectancy, they might not qualify, or just the opposite. Some people that are really in good health, if their premium is inexpensive enough, can still get an offer as well. Uh, it's a case-by-case situation, so we don't want to put anybody in a certain box. It's something that as, as these situations arise, we could handle those and, and be upfront based upon those, those factors where the offers might come in and like I mentioned as well, they're, they're not locked into anything. They're not obligating themselves by doing the review. So if, if the underwriting comes back and everybody thinks the person's going to live a lot longer or, or the premiums are a lot more expensive than the person ever thought and they don't get an offer or they don't get the offer that they are happy with, they don't, there's nothing that's obligating them to take the offer. No. They could just say no thank you and that would be yeah. the end of it. What, what is the longest time that uh, a, a buyer will commit to them? Is it 20 years, 30 years? I mean, how long can they wait? Uh, say somebody's you know, relatively healthy and in their 60s. Are they willing to wait 30, 40 years? What is the longest they're willing to wait? Um, I, I've seen, uh, generally it's about 15 to 17 years, but I've seen deals that we've been able to make work that have been over 20 years. It's just d- depending on how inexpensive those, those premiums are, so if we can get a really inexpensive premium, uh, then, you know, possibly even over 20 years. Uh, it, it's just because we have so many different buyers with different appetites that we, as long as we can get the numbers to work in somebody else's eyes and they think they're going to get the return that they think they're going to get, then it's something that we could, we could sell that policy. So I would say even, even 20 plus years is still doable. Uh, if the premiums are inexpensive enough. What is the competitive situation right now? Are there too many policies available? Are there too many buyers? What is the supply-demand situation right now? Uh, the market is actually excellent right now. It's, it's as good as I've ever seen it. And, like, you know, I've been doing this for over 16 years. Uh, we have a lot of very active and aggressive buyers. Uh, probably, 
last year we probably sold in excess of eight billion dollars uh, as a market in, in, in policies uh, last year. So there's a lot of appetite for all these buyers because they're seeing an attractive return on their investment that they continue to uh, we continue to see more and more money come to the market. And the more buyers, obviously, that we're able to bring to our market, uh, the more uh, the higher offers that we continue to see. So we've seen uh, a, a gr- an increase in, in the offers that we're getting on policies. We've seen a, a, a broader parameter. So you, we have people in their mid sixties that are very healthy, getting even small offers, and that's something that you know before a couple years ago we've never seen in our market uh, because. They are willing, you know, those the expected rates of return for, for these buyers continu- continues to go down because they have more and more money to spend. And they're willing to spend that money because they're seeing a good return, uh, continue to be more and more aggressive to make sure that they spend their money as opposed to, you know, their money sitting in the bank waiting. Uh, you know, if they're not competitive on these policies, they'll never spend their money. So we, we've seen a, a very good appetite in our market, and that's only helping the seller more and more to get even a better offer for their policy. Yeah. So part of it is because of low interest rates, right? Now, the people, the institutions don't want to keep the money in the bank earning nothing, and rates have been low for so long. They're, they know the rate of return they're going to get on this. They just don't know when they're going to get it. depends on when the person dies. But low interest rates well, have definitely well, they helped. Have an the idea. They have an idea based upon the medical about, you know, they're reviewing the medical. Uh, but, but a lot of these companies, they're, they're uh, diversifying their portfolio. So they're buying uh, people in, uh, in, you know, from the healthy people in, in their 60s, you know, to, to people in, in really poor health that might be, you know, uh, or much older. So they're trying to diversify uh, w- with a, a broad spectrum of in their portfolio generally. Now, some of these buyers seem to focus on certain areas, but but getting the whole market collectively, you know. There's there's a there's definitely a appetite across the board, and because they yes and they they don't want their money to sit in the bank. They want to uh, put that money to work, and uh, but they have it uh, you know based upon their medical evaluation, they have an idea of when they should expect their return. But obviously, you know, um, nobody really knows. That's why they're buying so many of them to to try yeah. to get some the law of large numbers to to hopefully meet so, their goal. So, if twenty years roughly is the longest, what is the shortest? Can they buy a policy if somebody has just gone into hospice or they're on their deathbed or kind of you know what wh- what is the parameter on that side? Well, yes, yes, you know they, they can buy anything anything to that degree. Obviously, at that point, if the person is in that poor of health. The family should try to keep the policy. They should try to find a way, you know, to keep hold on to that policy because that way, if if the person is that close to passing, it's something that you know the family should do their best so they get a hundred percent of the proceeds instead of you know sixty, seventy, eighty percent from our our market. Uh, But sometimes you know people really want that money, you know, maybe for for more medical care. Maybe, you know, some people want to spend that money today for their kids and grandkids to do something while they're still here. So there there are situations where where people that are older or or in really poor health want to take you know the proceeds today and we can help them as well and, and those offers will be substantially higher obviously than somebody that's that's healthy and it, it puts that money uh, to use today, and sometimes it helps them, you know, try some some health, uh, uh, some new health advances that might not be available through their insurance companies. Maybe some some uh, drugs that their insurance company isn't covering, uh, or or you know, some people want to take their whole family on a on a trip, you know, that they've always wanted to take, and that allows them to do that before they go. Yeah, very good. Okay, we're going to take another break. This is Jordan Goodman of The Money Answer Show. My guest this hour is Oleg Edelman. He is the Senior Life Settlement Analyst at Life Insurance Settlements, Inc. You can find out more about this if you're thinking of possibly selling your policy at fundinglife.com or their phone number 877-485-6681. We'll be back after this.
From the boardroom to you. Voice America Business Network. Attention heroes, current and former firefighters, law enforcement, military, medical, or educational professionals. Heroes can receive rewards averaging over $2,500 when they buy, sell, or refinance a home. Heroes come first. Along with the Homes for Heroes is the nation's largest hero reward program. Their mission is to provide extraordinary savings to heroes who provide extraordinary services to our nation and its communities every day. Learn how you you can purchase a home for no down payment, no closing costs, and get money back at closing. Find out how you can own for less than you may pay for rent. Get your hero rewards at heroescomefirst.com. That's heroes, H-E-R-O-E-S, comefirst.com, 888-437-6114. Jordan Goodman is an affiliate. He recognizes quality solutions, forming relationships to help improve the lives of his listeners. Are you a homeowner tired of making monthly mortgage payments with little progress towards paying down your principal? Does paying off your home in five to seven years without making larger or more frequent payments sound appealing? Paying off your home in full in five to seven years is really possible thanks to Truth and Equity's Mortgage Equity Optimization System, a money management approach that puts your money to work for you 24-7. If you own a home with some equity, have a decent credit score and verifiable income, you owe it to yourself to learn more about Truth and Equity's program. There's no need to replace your mortgage or refinance in many cases. The system works for new home purchases as well as current mortgages. Your home is your largest investment. Own it outright in five to seven years. Call Truth and Equity, 888-262-5540 or visit truthandequity.com, 888-262-5540. Jordan Goodman is an affiliate. He recognizes quality solutions, forming relationships to help improve the lives of his listeners. You've been listening to The Money Answer Show with Jordan Goodman. If you have a question for Jordan or his guest, please call us now at 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Now back to Jordan. Welcome back to The Money Answer Show. This is Jordan Goodman, your host. My guest this hour is Oleg Edelman. He is the Senior Life Settlement Analyst at Life Insurance Settlements, Inc., a company based to help put buyers and sellers of life insurance policies together. Welcome back to the show, Oleg. Thanks, Jordan. So we've described the situation that might make sense and the criteria. Let's just kind of go through the process. Say somebody does want to sell their life insurance policy. So the first step is evaluation. So just tell us what, what you do in evaluating if it makes sense to sell the policy. Well, that would, in, in a two to five minute call, I could give you an idea based upon a couple of factors. If I think there's an opportunity, if, if they qualify, uh, those factors w- would be the person's age, their, their general health condition, uh, the type of policy, uh, if it's a term policy, if it's still convertible, if it's a universal or a whole life or a second to die, depending if there's cash value, if there are any loans, things like that. Also, depending on how expensive or inexpensive their premiums are. And, and just having a short conversation about some of those factors I could give them an idea if I think they're going to qualify or not, if it's a borderline case, if it's something that, you know, uh, they might get 10% or 30 to 40% or, or, or more. Um, and, if, and if their expectations are, are you know, are, are in line with what I'm telling them, you know, we're, we're happy to do the evaluation. And they're not obligated, so if they change their mind, uh, but it's something that's good to discuss these cases uh, before going forward, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. If somebody barely qualifies and they think they're going to get 50%, you know, we can tell them up front, you, you, you're not going to qualify for that, and they don't have to go uh, through the process. Yeah. All right, so say they do qualify and they're interested. Uh, the next thing is to do an application. What, what is involved with the application, briefly? It, it, it's a very short application. It's It's state-specific, depending on where the owner of the policy lives or where the trust of the, you know, if the trust owns it, where the trust is domiciled. And uh, they can complete the application in a, in a few minutes. They would list their, you know, things like their name, their address, a uh, list of their doctors. Uh, they would sign a HIPAA form that would allow us to go out to their doctors and order their medical records. They would sign an insurance release form that would allow us to go out to their insurance company and order these projections uh, of, of, of to forecast how expensive their policy is going forward. 
um, and, and some compliance pages, but it, it's, it's a very short application, no longer than a few minutes. Then the third step is to compile the paperwork, particularly relating to medical records. So what's involved with that? Well, that's something that, that we're, we're more than happy to do. Uh, if the person is in a time crunch, we're more than happy for them to go out to their doctor or their insurance company to get these records. But oftentimes we have an entire staff that will reach out and, and contact their doctor and their insurance company on their behalf. And we would order last five years of their medical records uh, from their from primary physician, any specialists that are pertinent to their overall health. Um, as well as we would order the insurance projections from the insurance company uh, to, to forecast the premiums uh, in their policy. Okay, the next step then is to, sh- once you've pulled all this together, to put a package together to ship to various providers to buyers. So how does that process work? Correct. So depending on, on the factors of the policy, of the person's age, their health, you know, we have a lot of different buyers. They're all looking for more or less the same thing, but they do have their own specific guidelines. So we make sure that uh, if that person, say, lives in Texas, that uh, we send it out to all our Texas licensed providers. Uh, and then we'll, we'll make, you know, if the person's 72, make sure that all these buyers are qualified, depending on the size of the policy as well. So we're going to make sure that we send that case out to every legitimate licensed company that brings any type of value with all the guidelines met. And and they would review these policies. They would review the the medical records and the insurance projections to see if uh, they deem it a a positive positive, uh, uh, value. Okay. And then the next thing is they're going to submit bids back. So how does that process work if they're interested in buying the policy? Correct. So once these these groups of... of, uh, done their review on their end, um, we're going to start to get their bids. And, and all these groups, just like, you know, they're trying to get the best, uh, they're trying to buy it for as cheap as possible. Uh, so they, all these companies will start on the low end and, and will start to uh, uh, give us low bids in the beginning. And it's our job to make sure that they pay a fair market value, not, not a, you know, they don't get away with buying this uh, below fair market value. So we'll start to get bids and, and, We'll, we'll communicate with all the other buyers where those bids are, and these other buyers will, will bid and counterbid against each other, and we'll keep the seller you know, involved in the bidding process. We'll let them know as the bidding comes in and, and how it escalates uh, to keep them in the loop so, that, so they are aware that there is already an offer and, as, and, and how it uh, continues to go up and up. And once all the buyers are have have bowed out and we have the highest bidder we'll, we'll let the buyer know at that point and we still even try to squeeze out even a little bit more uh even once uh, you know we've had a higher bidder uh, you know to try to squeeze out every possible penny for the seller to try to maximize uh, their sale for them how long does that whole bidding process typically take um it, it depends on on the quality of, of the policy if, if we have um if, if there aren't uh many uh, if, if a lot of buyers aren't interested or it's a really borderline case, we could be done in a week. Sometimes it could stretch out into a couple weeks uh, if, if there's a lot of activity, if there's a lot of back and forth. We don't want to speed up the process. We don't want to give them any type of a deadline because we want to make sure that these buyers have all the time and, and all the information that they need to give us as much money as possible to, to maximize uh, the amount going to the client. Okay, so then once somebody has won, you've got the best bid, uh, that's what you call the notification stage. What happens then? So, correct. So, uh, once, once the person has, uh, has accepted their offer and they're happy with, with the highest bid that we've obtained for them, uh, we would get a contract out to them. And we're, we're, we're there from A to Z helping, helping the person. So, uh, once the contract came to our office, we would sticker it up, we would FedEx it out, include a prepaid FedEx for it to be returned and simplified as much as possible so that they could fill out the, the contract. And we, you know, we're, we're available for all their questions. We're available to go through the contract with them page by page. But we really try to simplify it by tagging it up before it even goes out uh, to keep it a, as simple as possible. And then the final step is a check is given and the ownership of the policy changes from the um, seller to the buyer. Is that right? Correct. 
So it's it's something that once once all the contracts have been completed and we've done all the cleanup. At that point, what would happen is uh, the changes of ownership and beneficiaries would be submitted to the insurance company for execution. At that point, their money would be fully escrowed by the seller. And once the written confirmation comes back from the insurance company that uh, the seller, uh, excuse me, that the buyer is now the, the owner and beneficiary, uh, usually uh, uh, the seller will get their money within three business days. Very good. Thanks so much. My guest this hour has been Oleg Edelman. He is the Senior Life Settlement Analyst at Life Insurance Settlements, Inc. You can find out more about this whole policy at his website, fundinglife.com, or 877-485-6681. Thanks so much. I think people have learned a lot, Oleg. Thanks again. Thanks, Jordan. Appreciate the time. Thanks again. We'll be back next week with another edition of the Money Answer Show. Goodbye for now. Thank you for joining Jordan Goodman and the Money Answer Show. If you have a question for Jordan, please visit his website at www.moneyanswers.com. And be sure to tune in every Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here on Voice America Business. See you next week.